Spring cleaning. Nice spring day here. Uh, beautiful sun. It's supposed to hit, uh, they say about 18 degrees today. It feels uh, feels pretty close right now. I'm going to give you give a little update on my uh, my honeybees, and unfortunately, it was a, uh, a disastrous year. Uh, my worst year ever since I started beekeeping. I lost all eight of my colonies. Um, I say eight, there were uh, six that I overwintered, but really it was eight uh, because in the late fall there were two hives that, um, uh, one hive just, it was in early November, uh, late October, early November, the queen and the entire colony had absconded. Uh, just no bees, they left all their honey stores, uh, just gone from one week to the next. Another hive just became suddenly extremely weak. Uh, and again, that was right about the same time period, early November, but I combined that weaker hive um, with another hive that uh, wasn't one of my strongest colonies. And it looks like I lost most of my colonies in by February. Warm enough for the uh, bees to be out doing their cleansing flights today. Nice to see. The uh, dead bees in front, um, that's a good sign. The reason is because uh, on warmer days like today, the uh, honeybees will carry their dead out, so to speak. Not so to speak, but that's exactly what they do. So in Canada, uh, we had like right across Canada, but in Ontario and in my area, it's just been devastating. Um, lots and lots of the beekeepers in my area lost uh, just, uh, you know, if they didn't lose all their colonies, they lost the majority of them. So we're, we're all in the same boat, unfortunately. Um, and the talk is that it's uh, mites, varroa mites, and that is for sure the uh, still the biggest uh, number one threat for our bees. And uh, varroa mites will weaken a hive to the point that everything else that has been piling onto the bees uh, will eventually do them in. So, um, you know, of course the winter temperatures are, uh, are an issue. Um, environmental factors, uh, they're, you know, we're still dealing with uh, corn and soy being our main culprits as far as uh, um, pesticide and uh, neonicotinoid use. Uh, so, sorry to be sort of a bit of a bummer here, but um, that's my situation. Um, I have uh, some really, really super cool uh, supportive uh, friends and family who are going to be pre-ordering some honey from me, and I've had a um, number of offers of uh, donations to help uh, restart the, uh, the bee yard. So, um, I have uh, four nukes um, from very trusted uh, beekeeper friends of mine uh, on order, so I should be receiving them hopefully in uh, in June, uh, really June is the hope. Um, and we'll be restarting the yard. So that's my story. That's a lot of gabbing and not so much beekeeping because I don't have any bees flying in the yard. So it's awfully quiet uh, on any other spring day. Uh, this yard would just be humming and all these bees would be out doing their, uh, their cleansing flights and um, looking for pollen. See, we've got some other uh, pollinators here checking these guys out. But uh, yeah, very uh, very difficult to uh, experience this. The only other time that I've had a complete loss was um, my very first year of beekeeping. And I didn't know uh, what the hell I was doing. And uh, one thing I've learned over the years is that uh, the more you know, the less you know. So don't uh, become too confident. It's advice for myself, but it uh, seems to apply to uh, anybody who is in, into this uh, somewhat expensive 
daunting and challenging hobby called uh, beekeeping. I love my ladies and it's, uh, it's really difficult to, uh, to see this. Okay, I'm going to uh, stop being a bummer here. I've got to uh, get these, uh, these maple taps out of the trees and um, uh, and start cleaning up the yard a little bit. Uh, lots and lots of branches. I have so many dead trees that need to come down. Uh, crazy. Um, and again, with my uh, uh, my winter back that I have, I may just need to uh, bring some help to uh, to get some of this uh, this wood down. So, all right, let's get untapping.